Hey guys, welcome to Chief Pigskin's YouTube channel. You're about to watch a home clinic where we find one quality coach and he talks on one very specific subject. If you'd like to see more of these come your way, please like and subscribe below and check us out at clinic.chiefpigskin.com. What's up football coaches? This is Coach Blair and I'm excited to be bringing Chief Pigskin some triple option and flex mode talk over the next couple months. Our first speaker is gonna be Coach Brian Gallagher. Brian Gallagher coaches at Booton High School in Booton, New Jersey. He's going to be talking about their toss play today, and I'm super excited. I got my notepad ready, so without further ado, here we go, Brian Gallagher. Thanks, Garrett. Guys, thanks uh, the Chief Pigskin for having me, and um, you know, those of you that are tuning in, thanks for, for uh, checking this out. I hope that there is you know, something that we go over in here that can Help you. I hope everyone is staying sane and working on a lot of football during this quarantine. Uh, been a bit of a blessing in disguise for me personally. I've got a six-month-old uh, that I've been able to spend a whole bunch more time with here. So, uh, you know, if he starts making some noise during this deal, you know, you'll have to excuse me. But, um, we're going to talk about the toss play, uh, which has been an important part of our deal at Putin High School over the last couple of years. We've had some success in the bunch of yards and won some games. And uh, obviously, this has been a big part of it for us. I think that um, if it is, you know, flex bone red option coaches that are watching this video, I'm sure that toss is uh, most likely a part of your offense or even the wing T guys that might be tuning in. Um, and so I don't want to take forever on rules um, but I do want to go over some of the details a little bit of drill work that I think um, has been important for us uh, the last thing before I start is um, that I've been the most spoiled uh, person in the world in terms of uh, being a football coach uh, I got to play in high school for Bill Regan Jr. at Morris Knowles High School who if you're a split back veer person um, you know, you got to find some, some Morris Knowles high school footage. Coach Regan is the best. Uh, I got to play for him in high school. Uh, my first coaching job when I was out of college was for my father, Gary Gallagher, who, um, if there's wing people in the room, you've probably, you know, seen some of his things or dealt with him at some point. Um, I've been able to work summer camps with Tom Herman and Dave McDonald uh, for years and learned a ton from those guys. And then in terms of the, the option stuff, uh, Coach Kenny Wheaton at Harding University has been a tremendous, tremendous help for us. And um, our offensive line coach to me is as good as it gets uh, in Pete Laniza. Uh, some of the drill work you'll see here, um, there's more of it. Uh, offensive line drill work available on YouTube if you, you type in their uh, high school offensive line play. Um, I think there's some more of Coach Laniza's drill work up on YouTube from an article that he had done in the past. So um, what I'm saying is that uh, there's nothing in here I don't think that is made up uh, or that I would take credit for coming up with. It's a whole bunch of really good coaches that I've learned this stuff from. and. Uh, I hope that I can pass some of it on uh, to you today. Uh, so the toss play for us, uh, first of all, there's a couple of things I think are important. Uh, you know, that we make a big deal with our team about. We, we talk about the big three when we're on offense, uh, ball, execution, and being physical. Um, so I think I put this on here, and this is like the deal that we show the kids. Uh, but I think it's worthwhile to – uh, track down some pictures of it being done right uh, and show it to the guys. You know, there's only so much talking that we can do. Uh, we're big on meeting before we go out on the field every time. And a quick picture of the guys doing it right. Um, and, you know, the, the, when you can find good pictures and it looks cool doing it the right way, you know, I think it's even more beneficial for you. Um, so, you know, we talk about the ball as a program. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, use that one. I think it's a great one. You know, you got the program in your hands when you're carrying the ball. Uh, 
just you know some details on that. Um, just the, the idea that you're emphasizing uh, ball security and taking care of the football at all times. And uh, any opportunities we get to show them, um, like the guys from Army and Navy, the guys from Citadel, uh, college guys looking cool, doing things the right way. Uh, we jump on those opportunities whenever we can. So uh, just some, some pictures of five-point pressure. Uh, we love this quote in our program at, at Putin High School. Uh, we want to just do a few things and do them really, really well. Uh, so when, when it's all said and done, um, if we were to lose a game, we want it to be because of something that we can correct in a drill uh, and not on a whiteboard. Uh, and so we don't want to get tricked. We want to be really good at the few things that we do, um, knowing our assignments and doing our job and finding the best set of 11 guys that are going to be team players to be selfless and all that stuff. Um, we want to be physical all the time. Uh, I, Jim Braddock, him, Cinderella, man, you know, he's a Jersey guy, so uh, our guys love that one. And that's the scene there where he uh, gets knocked down and he spits the blood out through his, through his teeth and he smiles at the guy. Um, so the idea that we can, you know, be tough and keep coming uh, even when things get hard, uh, stuff that we believe in. Um, our offense uh, this past year, uh, so we ran for 375 a game, uh, which was, you know, uh, the best in New Jersey. Uh, we passed for 483, which was not the best in New Jersey. Uh, but I do think um, we kind of made them count. There was a point in time where um, our quarterback had seven completions on the year, and they were all for touchdowns. Um, I think around week six or week seven that was. Uh, but important that you're proficient at it, that you work on your throwing game, and that you can make it count uh, when you do duck it. Um, I think the idea of balance, you know, clearly, you know, we were not balanced run to pass. Uh, but when you make those passes count and making sure that uh, you have to defend the whole field, in terms of uh, different guys carrying the ball, I think that uh, you can achieve balance. Uh, this was an average game for us this year. I think is worth um, something for you to take a look at at, at your own season. Um, and you know what did we run this year? So you can see for us, zone dive was clearly uh, our number one play at 16 per game, uh, and then with toss uh, and combined with Pullback loss would be number two for us, and about seven times per game that we would run uh, a form of toss. Um, like I said, I'm just putting that up there. I think that that is a, a worthwhile exercise to uh, you know sort everything on huddle and see what it was that you actually ran um, throughout the course of the year. Um, some other little details about our offense. I think if there is a spread option theme that we try to model ourselves the most after it's uh, Harding University and, and Coach Kenny Wheaton. I'm sure a lot of the option guys uh, that are watching have studied his stuff. Uh, me, he's just one of the greatest human beings that I've had the, the pleasure to work with and to meet. Um, always looking to help out whenever he can. And um, so much of what uh, I'm about to talk about is directly you know, me just passing his words on to you. Um, we are a no huddle offense. Uh, we don't ever play with a tight end or with a tackle over. We've messed with it a few times, uh, but in the end, it just felt like uh, more stuff for us to practice. Uh, and we'd rather concentrate on getting really good at uh, the basics. Um, talked about this earlier, but we, whenever there's a mistake, we want it to be something that we can fix with a drill. Uh, and not on a whiteboard. Uh, we have very little live contact uh, in our practices. Uh, so once double sessions were over this past year, we didn't put full equipment on for a practice all year long. Um, and when we are in team, uh, the coaches will make up the play side of the defense. And I put uh, just a couple of clips here to give you an idea uh, of what I'm talking about with that. 
I firmly believe in it. It's probably a, a clinic talk all on its own to go over, you know, the system and how we do it. Uh, it's something I, you know, strongly believe in. I think in terms of the speed with which you can get your team period done and the different number of looks that you can show to your guys, um, I think it's it's worth it. They got to get their more physical uh, banging done, uh, you know, in their individual periods. Uh, but I do, you know, firmly believe in this. So uh, when you look at this, play, we're going to run a toss here, but that's me um, working the halfback on his block. Uh, this would be our halfbacks coach here, our offensive line coach one, and offensive line coach two. Uh, coach Norton here works with fullbacks and uh, halfbacks, and he's playing safety there. Uh, the one position where we uh, generally have a coach that is uh, not playing defense and is coaching them up is the split end. Uh, because I think that oftentimes those guys kind of get forgotten. Uh, and it's not so much on toss, uh, much more so with the option plays and giving different looks. Uh, this is important, but, um, you know, there are a few scenarios that the halfbacks got to get real familiar with out here on their block. And so I would rather have it be me show him, you know, when he's up the field, you got to kick out when he's not up the field uh, arcing. Uh, I would rather have it be me than to be, uh, you know, a, a sophomore guy uh, trying to do it, trying to follow instructions. So, you know, just in those two plays, being able to show those guys those two looks. Um, yeah, that's that's something I believe in. Uh, old um, should have said this also, but my contact information, I'll pull it back up at the end. Uh, my contact information was there on that first slide. Any, anything, uh, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, so let's get into toss. Uh, this is what we would show to the kids, so you don't really need to spend much time reading the top there. Um, you can see that it's been a, a successful play for us. So in uh, this past season, we were 9.67 per play when we pitched it to the halfback, and we were 8.8 .8 per play when pitching it to the fullback. Um, just a, a quick overview of everyone's rules. So the play side tackle, we want to flat pull through number one. We want to make him go back door, and then your eyes are inside for the linebacker for the safety. The one asterisk that I would have next to that is when he hears the word crush on the end of the play, when our split end is going to block down, he has to know come around and crush. So if we had our split end cheated down and blocking down on either him, or if we had him flexed all the way down and blocking there, down on the and then on the line of scrimmage, uh, the tackle needs to know to come around the brush. And he might just be a little bit flatter than he is on his normal pull. Right? The uh, play side guard, we want to flat pull and run through the heels of the five technique and block the play side linebacker. We set that as his aim point uh, to get him on course. But again, um, he's going to sprint. He's going to not block anything that runs behind him. He's going to do his best to block anything that crosses his face. The play side halfback, I think, is an important uh, deal on this play in terms of how you coach him up. We've done it different ways, uh, but I think the way that we learned it from Coach Wheaton a few summers ago, um, you know, I feel really kind of strongly about now. I think. Uh, our guys do a nice job with it. When we get to uh, the clips, we'll have some good pictures, I think. But the play side halfback, we want it to go off on a 60 degree path. All right. So if he learns uh, that when he's arcing, he's at 90, he's just slightly less of an angle than that. Uh, and we want him to run that course. We want him to create an imaginary laser beam that comes out of his nose. And so if the man that he's blocking crosses his laser beam, then it is a kick out. Until then, we want him to arc everything. 
Uh, now, I think that more often than not, uh, if I were to break down every one of our plays this year, I'm sure that there are more accounts than logs. Uh, but we want him trying to arc until the man crosses his laser beam, uh, at which point he turns it into a scout and swings his tail and pushes the man out the sideline. Uh, another one that I think is important is the ball carrier and the details for him. The idea that he is going to run right through the fullback's heels, and we will always have a cone when we're doing, uh, you know, our group work. Uh, we'll always have a cone where we want the pitch caught, and we're going to put it just outside of that um, opposite halfback's alignment, and four yards deep. Just move it up a little bit there. All right. Uh, that's where we want the pitch caught. If we're trying to move up properly, we should catch it that wide uh, every time. All right, so he's going to take off on the D and down in our cadence. He's going to sprint uh, for that spot. The thing that's important, and we've done it before where we have uh, laid down, you know, agile bags back here to make sure that they are not losing ground. All right, so. Uh, to be more accurate, we would have those things on the five-yard strike to make sure that uh, the ball carrier is not losing ground. Okay, so if he gets too much depth and we're catching the pitch back in here, uh, the play is no good. Right, so we want to make sure we stay right on the fullback's heel line, and flatten out, and catch the thing wide enough. Um, the fullback is another thing uh, that I think often gets overlooked. Uh, but I think is important when you're running this play. All right, so we want him to dive for the outside leg of the left guard, in this case of the backside guard. Uh, and it's important that he runs that uh, hard. Okay? If you think about a linebacker um, that is team, the fullback, all right, it should look like you're running dive that way. Uh, and hopefully as someone to take just at least one step, you know, in the wrong direction. So important that those guys don't treat it like a playoff. The planes uh, will have the nearest deepest player with no bag on it. Okay. Um, and then we're going to get into a little bit how we use some of the different bags uh, to run the play. Uh, but we want a hard stem. Uh, we want to get a good shimmy and then uh, do a great job on the stalk block that way. Uh, again, this is uh, Army running it. And again, I only put this on here to, to give you the idea. Uh, any opportunities you get, I think, to show them uh, college guys, you know, big time guys doing the things that we do, um, you know, I think you want to take advantage of those things. And so we did this one for the fullback because, you know, some high school fullbacks out there might think of us as a playoff. Uh, but if you're, you know, the fullback at West Point, uh, you think of it as an opportunity uh, to go blow somebody up, you know. And so we, we want our guys thinking like that, thinking physical and uh, playing hard all the time. Um, a couple more details before we get to, to some clips. Um, so we use the word crush uh, for our split end coming down. And um, we use the same word. Uh, kind of regardless of whether we want it to be um, a down lineman or like a stand-up outside linebacker because we'll use the formation to make sure it's on the, the correct guy. So we say the first man inside of you, we're going to flex, meaning the split end is all the way down, three yards off the tackle, then that's usually going to end up being two uh, guys, you know, Five technique down lineman. If we're in what we call split, and the split end is six yards off the tackle, then it normally ends up being like a four-four outside linebacker. Um, and so, if they just hear a crush and the first man inside of them, um, I think we kind of kill two birds with one stone. The one exception is when you have like a four-three. If there's a linebacker stacked directly behind. Um, the down line, and it can be a little unclear for them. So we would use swap when we want them on the linebacker and crush 
if we want them on the down guy in that case. Um, things I think are important. When you are crushing, it should be a head behind block. Uh, so if the man is going to make the play, uh, now as wide as we need to be with the pitch, if he's going to make the play, then his only chance is to go up field, to take an angle um, and get there. If he comes underneath you, we should be wide enough that you, he can't get there anyway. So it should be a head behind block. We want it to be a shoulder block, game or backfield shoulder for his hip pad. So if I was a right split end crushing, I would be aiming my left shoulder for the man's hip pad. Um, must be low and physical. So oftentimes, you know, our split ends are not the biggest players on our team, and we are asking them to block. You know, five techniques sometimes. Uh, they've got to take pride in it, be uh, very low and very physical um, when they go to make that block. When we put the word crush on, it also tells the halfback that you're picking out the first man past the crush. All right, we don't say the corner, and we'll get to a couple of clips while where, where um, you know, I think that will make sense why we say first man outside the crush and not to just go uh, block the corner. Uh, switch is when it's too high, and that's telling our split end to go to the uh, near safety. And in that case, the halfback does have the corner. All right. Um, the one exception when, when we're switching, if it's a safety, if he triggers like on the motion and is real aggressive downhill, that's the one time when it's got to be uh, a head in front block. Um, any hesitation at all, everything else uh, should be a head behind. Um, this last note I think is really important in 2020 football. Uh, on down blocks by your split ends, you know, there are opportunities uh, sometimes for, you know, highlight reel hits. Uh, you have to resist that temptation. Even if it's legal and your head is in front, um, I'll show you a couple of clips of what I'm talking about. Um, it's going to get called for a penalty. Some more uh, little details here on the quarterback. One of the things that we do with them is have them pigeon toe their play side foot. So our quarterback here is just going to go through the footwork, but uh, we're going to run toss right. In their stance, we want those right toes turned in. Uh, so it helps them to get all the way around. And when the ball gets pitched, okay, we want them to be all 10 toes at their target. So during doubles, we would set them up just like this. Uh, Stationary target, he's four yards off the sideline, and his front foot is six yards from the quarterback. We always put the quarterbacks on a five-yard strike so they can understand uh, their midline principle, um, and then we work from there. When we're doing these, uh, I don't even mention uh, or concern ourselves with the idea of booting uh, whatsoever. So um, in the real game, when we get to the team later on, it's a group. We want them, after the pitch is secured, to work back to the midline and run their boot the opposite way. Uh, but when we're just working on the pitch, um, we don't concern ourselves with that. I don't think you want them thinking about it too much. Um, other details on the pitch, we want to make sure that our hands are always below our numbers. So uh, it should come from hip to hip. And you make sure that your hands stay at or below your numbers. When they come up above your numbers, um, is when the ball will sail or get too much height on it. Uh, so we say just like you're blowing water out of the boat, uh, hands below numbers. And again, to me, the most important part is all 10 toes at the target. And again, I think uh, having that place side toe, pigeon toe to bit in your stance uh, can help in getting all the way around. Uh, as you can see, we do not do, uh, I know there's guys that each uh, zero step and stepping back with that play side foot first. I'm not saying that that's wrong whatsoever. I'm sure that there are teams that do it and do a great job with it, um, but it's not something that we have done in the past. We want to pigeon toe and pivot on that foot 
get it out there as quick uh, as we can. Um, another particular drill that I think uh, is really important in um, run and toss is that your offensive linemen do uh, a pull and lead drill or a five yard pull drill. Uh, so this is Pete Lanese, our offensive line coach and a couple of our guys out working on it. Uh, but when you set the thing up, uh, again, we want to be on a five yard strike. So we've got uh, a guide for ourselves. I think it's important that it's a heavy bag at the end uh, and not a shield uh, when you're doing this drill because uh, we want the guys to be able to get their body uh, under control. It's not necessarily something that your big guys are used to doing all the time to uh, going from a sprint to getting under control and then making a block. Uh, the end of the drill, so. Uh, in a perfect world, we would get same foot, same shoulder, all right? Uh, he's a little bit late with that uh, left foot on that particular rep, but we want a good shoulder shot at the end of the deal. Uh, I'm sure, I know we've had a million of them where your linemen have a great pull, they get out there, and then they are reaching their arms out trying to tag somebody. Um, the thing that we say to them is just try to step on the man's toes uh, and get a shoulder on it. And then the last little thing uh, that's important here, maybe we'll be able to see it better from the side shot, but when the whistle blows to end the rep, we want them to freeze in fit position. And I think that's an important little detail if we can catch it here. All right, you still that last little freeze. Um, so you want to make sure that you can hit the whistle when they're in a athletic blocking position of their body at the end of the rep. So Pete will hit that second whistle to end it. And it's not just stand up and run back uh, on that second whistle. You want to be in good fit position. Um, and then the next whistle, uh, two of them will hustle the bag back to its spot. Um, so making sure uh, they want to dip that shoulder as they turn the corner, right, and get themselves squared up. Uh, and again, I think having a heavy the end of that, you know, is an important little detail uh, for the drill. The fact that they are getting under control and getting a shoulder on someone, they are, you know, out there in space. All right, we'll get to some uh, clips here now, uh, and, and hopefully can see some some good things happening. All right, so this first one, uh, you know, we're running uh, just a base toss without any tag on it. Um, so it should be uh, near steepest player, run our 60 degree, all right, um, and then good flat pulls by the line. All right. Um, again, the depth, our fullback will cheat up uh, on this. Um, if you're no huddle like us, you know, it takes a little bit of uh, – practice to make sure that you're doing it the right way and that you're not broadcasting it too much, you know, when you uh, run a freeze on there. All right. Um, let's check the pitch point on this one here. Or the, the catch point, I should say. So we should be uh, hopefully catching it out here about the middle of the numbers if we have it timed up correctly. All right. And so, uh, you know, Tells us that the timing is right, that we're catching it wide enough. Uh, let's check the quarterback's footwork. All right, so again, 10 toes at the target uh, on that pitch. You don't want them pitching it across their body. Uh, you know, it's an important little detail on that deal. All right. Um, this one with uh, a crush now. Uh, so again, um, Crush tells our split ends the, the first defender inside of you. So, again, we kind of dictate it for them by the formation. Um, when we're in this deal here. First man inside you tells him to go crush that. If we were flexed down further, if we were lined up in here, then he would know the crush on the uh, down line in there. And again, the uh, 
uh, halfback when he hears it, 60 degree course and uh, block the first thing past the crush. So good uh, hustle out of the place at halfback um, on that one. Um, some tags and things that I mentioned uh, that we can get into. Uh, you know, so I mentioned earlier, we don't use a tight end ever um, for a tackle over, or at least we haven't, uh, but we will bring both split ends over. So um, for us, we would say over flex here, and that tells the inside receiver to flex down. The, the split ends are told if we call a crush out of some form of over, if you are the wide man, all right, so it's just one of them flexing. If you're out regular, then you're not part of the crush. He has nearest deep in this case. The inside one is crushing, and the halfback then has the first outside of the crush. And I think this is a good picture um, of a crush uh, by the split end. Again, uh, head behind, I think is important. His only chance, let me get back to my squiggly line here. Um, that five techniques only chance to make the play is take the upfield side here and run an angle that way. Uh, so we want to put our head on that side and run through our whole body. All right, if he's going to come underneath here, uh, he should not be able to get there. If he can, then something was not timed up correctly with our motion or with our quarterback's pitch. All right, you can see quarterback, good job. Uh, all 10 toes at the target. All right, he should boot uh, when he's done here. But uh, I think that's a good picture of the crush and getting your head behind. Uh, and then, you know, he looks to go and get uh, somebody else to get a better uh, angle on that crush. Um, again, you know, this was not a good uh, size matchup for the Bombers in this particular one. But um, Mike London coaches our split ends. And uh, I think doing some of this stuff against the one man, the effect that these guys got to be tough and got to be willing to use their shoulders. Um, you know, if you get down low enough, uh, you aim for hip pads, uh, you know, you can be okay. He could probably be a little bit lower even, uh, but we're still underneath. And again, the thing that's important is uh, head behind on your crush. All right, good pull here by uh, the play side tackle as well. All right, so running. Um, probably could have turned up on number three there, but um, you know, a, a good job of hustling and getting out in front of the thing. Um, in terms of, here's one more crush again. Uh, so first man inside of you, and again, a little adjustment that our kid makes at the end, I think, is important. Uh, it's way there that he adjusts, slides up field a little bit to get his head behind. Uh, so, again, he's going to make the play. He's got to come this way. I think if he tries to run underneath, then we should outflank them if we're timing it up correctly. And then um, the halfback, okay, so corner cross laser beam on that one, so it becomes a kick out. Um, Real quick to mention this on the previous one, but uh, again, the deal with the play side halfback, and I think trying to use like that um, laser beam principle, he has this coming out of his nose here. And if the man does not cross it, yeah, we want to arc him, we want to get his outside shoulder. Uh, so I don't think it's good to, uh, you know, declare that it's a kick out or to declare it's an arc. I think that's a good way to teach them using that laser beam. So the man didn't cross, he's able to get his head outside. Um, and I think that's a great job on the block there. Uh, the half All right. Um, another kind of game plan thing that I think um, in, in terms of using the play and how it fits in with everything, so if you're playing against uh, a 50 defense uh, and the nine techniques are getting involved, so you saw early on that um, zone dive is our number one deal. And so um, 
if the nine technique is making tackles when we're running zone dive. So uh, they kind of cross face inch before I and our halfback ends up on that linebacker on zone dive. If the nine technique is folding in there and making tackles, then the first thing you should do, uh, in my opinion, is to run toss. And so if you look at this one, the you know on paper to to draw it up with your tackle getting outside of a nine technique it doesn't look realistic but you know what is that guy doing in the game uh if he's you know real conscious of playing your quarterback real hard on inside gear or like i said if he's getting involved and you know making a tackle for a two or three yard gain on zone dive then he's you know arced himself he has to be we have to be able to pull outside of him if that's the case. Uh, so just run and toss with no tag um, against that type of defense, I think, can be a successful thing. You can see that, the, again, the, the tackle gets all the way outside of a nine technique and turns the corner on him. Uh, you know, you're going to have a good play uh, when you do that. All right. Um, I think that making a big deal, you know, we ask a lot of our split ends in this kind of offense, okay? You're not going to get it thrown to you a whole bunch. So, uh, again, I think you need a coach that's doing a great job with it. Our guy, Mike London, does a phenomenal job working with those guys. And then when they do a nice job, uh, you got to make a big deal about it, okay? Uh, you know, helmet stickers for box downfield, helmet stickers for real good stalks. Um, and the idea that stalking, you know, it can be a physical fight that we want to win. Um, that's a, a great, great effort uh, by the split end, I think, on that one. All right. Um, there you guys. Uh, put this one on here again for the uh, halfback in that laser beam deal. All right. So the uh, base side halfback is taking his 60 degree with his left foot. All right, and as soon as the man he's going to block crosses the laser beam, it's going to become a kick out, right? And, uh, again, with repping it up a whole bunch in group and showing them the different looks, not only should he know that, but the ball carriers, the thing that we tell them is when you can see your partner's back, when you can see his entire back number, or like we don't have our names on our jerseys, but if you could read the name across his back, that's when it's time to come underneath. Otherwise, we want everything to stay outside. Um, I think that the blocking halfback could do a better job here of finishing. But once he's on, he should right now swing his tail into the hole and try to push this thing that way uh, a little better than he does. But uh, I think he's right for kicking out. And you see the ball carrier getting left cleats in the ground. Oop about that uh, and looking to come underneath it. Uh, good hustle by the, the play side tackle getting downfield, but this is one that drives me crazy. Again, um, when you work that pull drill, this reaching with your hands at the end of it uh, drives me nuts. Okay, so get closer to him. Again, try to step on his toes and try to get a shoulder on it. And our ball carriers will make you right. Uh, but we don't want to reach our hands out and, uh, you know, number one, you're risking a holding penalty. Uh, just try to step on his toes when you get out there in open space uh, and try to get a shoulder on it. All right. All right. I think this is um, another decent picture of a crush. Uh, sorry about that one. All right, real good picture of Crush on this one uh, by the split end. And we'll get to the end zone and get a better shot of it here. Um, but, um, again, not a favorable size matchup for us, okay? Anytime we're in either of those cheated down alignments, in split or in Crush, uh, we always have our feet flipped. So our uh, outside foot is up and inside foot is back. Uh, and so he wants to aim for a hip pad. He wants to get his head behind, uh, good and low, getting a shoulder on it. 
uh, and then finish, run your feet. Um, a real, you know, good, good picture of how you want a crush uh, on, a, on a defensive end to look. All right, and then getting the halfback on his 60 degree. And that one became a kick out. All right, uh, some other things like with formations. Uh, so this would be one of those situations I was talking about. This is a 4-3 defense. Um, and so, um, son of a gun, sorry about that, guys. Uh, when they stay in a box, like a 4-3 stack, uh, if that linebacker is stacked behind the five technique, then I think you do have to have two words. Have Rush and have swap. All right. Uh, but when we were getting over, uh, you can see that he would slide out of the box a little bit. And so um, we could have just said crush here because he would know that it's this one because he's the first one inside. All right. And again, um, when you teach it to the halfbacks, those tags, uh, I think the idea of telling them that. When you hear crush, you have the next thing outside of the crush so that uh, they know not to run all the way out here to the corner. So uh, the wide split end knows I'm not cheated down, so I can't be part of the crush. So I'm nearest, deepest. The halfback knows first thing outside the crush, so it's probably him. And split end uh, is crushing or swapping uh, poorly on that particular play. You know, get you a half fact that runs pretty fast too. This guy was a special, special player for us. Uh, you get a great kick out uh, out of the play side halfback here. Again, I think he does a better job on contact. You don't want them to just uh, get to the spot and say, you know, I did it. Uh, he, he's kicked out. Uh, swing your tail and run your feet and open up that gate for us as much as you possibly can. So I think a great, great job by number three, uh, the right halfback here on this particular one. You see the tail swinging, and then the feet running uh, on contact there, making a big play for it. End zone shot is not great here. Yeah, let's Pass that one. All right. Uh, put this one on here uh, just for the, uh, you know, so much of what we do in, in wing tee or option offenses uh, is to encourage hustle, you know, and I think um, these are the kinds of plays that you want to make a big deal about uh, when you get the team together and you're watching film. Uh, so, you know, that's the quarterback. Um, after he pitched the ball and booting opposite. Uh, and, you know, the, the kid with the ball is, like I said, pretty special, makes some things happen down there. Uh, but the, the quarterback sprinting downfield to, to get a block, um, you know, just the, the kind of things that you want to uh, encourage and emphasize and make a big deal about um, with your players. All right. Uh, good picture of the front side of the deal. Uh, in in the game here. So again, um, that same um, halfback. So we're going to crush here. All right, head behind. Okay, could be a little bit lower. Probably get a little bit more shoulder pad on it. Uh, but it gets the job done. Again, the thing that's important here is not getting, in my opinion anyway, is not getting nose to nose with him. So it doesn't need to be you know a kill shot. But if he's going to try to come underneath. He should not be able to make that play ever um, as long as we have the timing uh, worked out right with our backfield. Uh, so uh, by aiming your head behind, okay, and not allowing him to come this way, uh, you know, you can get your job done. All right, again, the play side halfback takes his 60 degree. Okay, the man turns to cross his laser beam, so swing your tail and go park him on the bench. The best of your ability um, and a good pull uh, by the front side tackle here as well. 
getting out in front. All right, he should run through. Uh, the one thing that I think uh, you do a better job of here is to get your body outside of the man more. Run through that outside shoulder of the man you're going to block. Um, but he gets just enough, and uh, you know we're off to the race. Okay, um, another you know game plan uh, adjustment. Uh, when we are in over and uh, the adjustment is for the corner to go over, uh, this is something, you know, kind of the first thing that we'll go to. So, um, again, by being no huddle, uh, we can get a pretty good picture, you think, of, uh, you know, how they're adjusting our unbalanced things. So, you know, we're watching uh, the corner run over right now, and one of our, our First answers is going to be to run toss to where he just left. So um, if you can get outside of that five technique and if you can get uh, some kind of a block on the uh, outside linebacker that's left out there, then, you know, you should have a shot. All right. Um, again, provided that it's timed up right uh, and all that stuff. Um, I think it's important to show this one uh, for what not to do, okay? I think you have to talk about this with your split end. So if we watch the split end up top, uh, when you and I were playing football, uh, this was, you know, everybody's high-fiving you and, uh, you know, you get a helmet sticker for it. Um, but it's important that they know not to do this, okay, because – uh, 2020 football, again, even if it's perfectly legal, if your head is in front, if it's done with your shoulder pads, if somebody goes flying, okay, you're getting a penalty for, you know, hitting too hard or whatever you want to call it. So if he just shimmies down right now and screams the man off, play basketball on him, keep your body in between him and the sideline, uh, you know, your job is going to get done. So for as much fun as this is, uh, you have to tell them not to do it, okay? And we didn't get a flag in this particular case, but uh, I think that we got really lucky. And uh, later on in the season, I had that clip sent to me by the, you know, head of officials um, pointing out that this should have been a penalty and make sure your guys aren't doing this anymore. So um, important that you – push them up on shimmy down and get in front of them. All right. Uh, one last, you know, crush here. Uh, and then we'll get to a couple of fullback tosses. All right. So, again, head behind. It doesn't need to be a kill shot. So, better job here. Just shimmy down. Okay. Make sure your head is behind so that uh, – he can't take the upfield path to get there, and the job is done. Okay, when they try to make that inside move, if you uh, gotten a piece of him, uh, that it's going to work out. You know, uh, in the end. All right. Uh, I wanted to put a couple of clips here. Uh, let's get that going on the field. Um, a couple of clips here. Uh, if you're fullback. Uh, you know, is your guy. Um, I think there can be advantages to running fullback toss. So um, we were trying to take him off in one step of motion. So you know, we did it in group work first and put the cone down and made sure that we could catch the ball wide enough. I think the advantage of doing this is that you have less uh, motion, you have less to trigger any kind of rotation. Um, from the defense, I think the disadvantage is that you're not going to be running quite as fast uh, when you catch the ball. Uh, but I do think it can be a good thing, and especially if your fullback is your guy, um, you know, it can be helpful. And uh, it can also help you in, you know, formations. You can run it uh, out of trips if, you know, your, your halfback is a better blocker than a split end you can get in real trips and uh, run it that way. Um, so we were taking them off in the, uh, on the R and ready, down, ready, sit, hike, 
uh, we had them taken off on the R and ready. All right, so here's one with a crush. All right, uh, so same kid that had that uh, knockdown earlier. You know, this is every bit as effective. He should be lower still uh, than he is here, but uh, it's getting the job done. Like just putting your body outside of him, putting your head behind, and screening him off. Uh, base side tackle should probably take that first one uh, that he runs by there. All right. Uh, if we watch 55 there, I think he should probably turn his eyes inside and take that first. Uh, but good job by him of running fast. He ends up being a touchdown block. Um, another thing, you know, the, the guys that are on the backside of the play uh, and the idea that they hustle, that it's not a playoff for them, you know, that's the center um, working really hard, getting all the way down there in front of the thing. Um, the sprinting and trying to make people go back door. Uh, but, you know, this guy's just as tough as they come for us. And uh, I think these are the kind of things like that's got to be a helmet sticker. That's got to be uh, pointed out to the whole team that that's the kind of hustle and effort uh, that we want. You know, we want to get way downfield and, and being selfless and all that stuff. All right. Uh, again, we're crushing from over flex here. So inside we'll crush. Outside, we'll block near his deepest. All right. Uh, and again, just to give you a couple of shots of that, uh, you know, to the fullback. Um, um, working on a little bit. Uh, to have in your pocket for when the, the time comes. Uh, this is at a big, you know, point in a big game for us. Uh, but, uh, you know, working uh, halfback pass, just uh, – little extra deal that might be worth, uh, you know, get a couple reps each week and have it ready for, for the rest of the season. That's a big one. Um, guys, I think that's that's all I've got uh, for today. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, please do not hesitate. Let me put my contacts back up here one more time. If there's anything uh, that I can help you out with, like I said, um, I've been spoiled and been surrounded with people that have helped me. Um, and so, you know, anything that I can do to help you or your program, um, I would love to do. So uh, my email's there, my, my Twitter's there. Uh, guys, thanks again for having me and uh, best of luck to everybody, you know, going forward.